Daily Mail, the mood of the Daily Mail today is... What time do you call this? <laughs> huh? What time do you call this? Uh, it, the first story is um, basically the bosses of a po anti-poverty quango, um, which are called, is called the Commonwealth Development Corporation, apparently are living it up, dining in, in uh, Uber restaurants and taking taxis. Uh, but they are kind of outrageous. They are they are bosses Taking of a big taxis. of uh, they're executives, and of course, I mean they're hardly going to eat a chicken cottage on Streatham High Street, <laughs> you know, out of a, a, out of a bucket. So um, it says there was seven hundred pounds for a dinner, but we don't know how many how many were eating at the dinner. Is it, it, worth, is it worth saying that the editor of the Daily Mail earns one point eight million pounds at this point? I don't know whether it is or not. I'm sure he eats at fine restaurants. Um, <laughs> so that's the first stories in the Daily Mail. The, the, today's mood of the Daily Mail is. I'm sorry, Gav. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it's on page six. The, uh, the the story is about Michael Gove, the um, the, the, the government education minister. Uh, it's a typical. This is a typical Daily Mail story because the fourth word in is could. Middle class families could go to the back of the queue under explosive plans to tear up. Um, schools admissions and um, basically it could possibly. What do they say that the poor, poorer kids can leapfrog to the front of the exactly. admissions? Exactly, which kind of it, it does throw my brain into this <laughs> confusion. I don't know what party is doing what. It seems that this is an attempt to appease the the, the liberals part of the cabinet. Uh, that basically, and it seems to be continuing what Labour had done with academies, say, which, like which Labor, yeah. you know, setting up in poorer areas to allow those of of, of a very, you know, under sixteen thousand pound a year income to have free school meals. Do we, and... do we think this is a good idea or not? Well, frankly, of course, it's a good idea, but I love the fact that the Daily Mail are, oh, middle class are going to be affected. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one uh, is in the Daily Mirror. Today, uh, the... Page nine of the Daily Mail, today's mood of the Daily Mail is, I don't like it! I don't, I don't like it! <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's, um, it's actually a really sad story. Uh, one of our great national heroes, footballing national heroes, Nobby Stiles, uh, oh, really because he's not very well and also he wants to leave something for his children, for his three sons uh, and grandkids, is, is basically wants to sell all his World Cup memorabilia, really which is always sad, sad when he's people are forced to do that. Um, yeah. But it will raise an awful lot of money, and as he says, you know, he'd rather look after Wouldn't his children. Wouldn't it be nice, it be nice if somebody like £100,000 a week, uh, love rat Wayne Rooney and style icon Colin had a wet round? Do you know how, okay. much, do you, do you know how much that Nobby won and the team won for Go actually on. winning? It was uh, £650 after tax they all earned. <laughs> for winning the World Cup? For winning the World Cup. And it's hard to imagine Great. Nobby Stars would have been the pin-up man for Gillette or... or, yeah. or, or, or <laughs> Max. Or in different yeah. times. It's a sad mm. story. Nicely done, Steve. Thanks. Uh, the, all right, the first story I have is in the Daily Mail today's mood of the Daily Mail is, right, please remove your trousers. I shall make this as painless as possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, it's about cloning foods. Uh, food and animals of clone origin could be secretly spreading into our supermarkets. Uh, the Food Standards Agency, which monitor uh, the quality of our food, uh, basically said there's no way of preventing this. There's too many strains of cloned food already. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, however, there is no food, or s um, food safety risk at the moment associated with these yeah. cloned foods. In fact, foods. they have no idea what the future holds. No, exactly. Um, uh, it's all a bit kind of... Okay. It's Brave New Worldy, anyway. Uh, the next is a, another story in the Daily Mail, and uh, it's about a girl who ate some uh, mushrooms, uh, death cap Alice, mushrooms. Alice, was that, was that her name? No, OK. Uh, <laughs> Um, she, went, <laughs> she, she lives in the country, she went out cycling near where she lives. Yeah. Uh, she normally goes out cycling and, and likes to eat blackberries, wild plums and mushrooms. Most of us just go to a supermarket and make <laughs> do with that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and she, basically, caps, if you it? eat to, one of these, yeah. normally, it can kill a, a, a grown man. Yeah. She ate two of them. Now, this, even if you do survive, the worst, the, 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 often that what can happen if, if you haven't been wiped out, that you'll have liver failure and yeah. kidney failure. Dialysis for the rest of your life. Well, the girl's been absolutely fine. I mean, she went, she, they said, uh, you know, she, she began to look bad, Lucy turned yellow and the toxin levels peaked 300 times higher than they should have been. But she's fine now. It was amazing. Sorry. I mean, it's kind of nothing short of miraculous, really. Um, there's a moral to be learnt here. Just don't moral, eat mushrooms. Moral, moral, moral. Moral, oh. oh, don't do that way. I want to look at the mushrooms. <laughs> you can't. I've got them growing in my garden. I want 
Well, just don't eat them. Buy them from a shop woman. Yeah. Feed them to the snails. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the last uh, story's in the Daily Mail. So my last mood of the Daily Mail uh, is... The um, come here, off. I've got something in the back to show you. <laughs> <laughs> If you've ever sat in a car with your loved one or spouse, you'll probably realise that this is a, a... It's basically a breeding ground for potential arguments. Yes. And the wonderful survey, basically, it says that it takes just 22 minutes into a car journey for the argument to ensue. Why? 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 Most people, we were talking earlier, think it's about two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you want to drive? No. Do you want to drive? No. Uh, this is a survey of 3,000 motorists revealed 71% of adults have argued with their partner about the quality of their driving. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, one in five motorists say they've pulled the car to the curb and refused to drive any further <laughs> until they get out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not so easy on a bike, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst on the bike. If you go on the back of a bike, and, oh. and, and oh, I've got friends who are brilliant riders, and I trust them, but the sensation of being on the back of a bike with someone who... who or, if, yeah, or if you have a pillion that's just all oh, unbalanced. Yeah, you go one well, way, well, and there you go the other. Trying to make a sandwich while you're <laughs> driving <laughs> along. You're like, oh, still. But it's great fun, Amanda. You really should try it. Oh, I will, I will. <laughs> I will, I will, I promise.